Welcome back, 0K fans, to the 0K February 2018 1v1 tournament. Round 5 is starting, finally. There was a sl small delay because... Yay. Yeah, because Waka and Kira thought... Like, I thought they were going to be DQ'd, and then they came back, and then they played, in a, like, a 35-minute game, and that then they still were DQ'd because Challenge screwed up, so... That was a waste of time. I'm not happy I, about that. Right. You know, for, for me, it's just professional risk. But when it you is. go into tournaments, open tournaments, you may have these games. Yeah. This is what happens, but eventually all the games end and the tourney will continue. Yeah. Well, anyway, we're going to be going on to Google Frog versus Wesley Boss. Which should be a Man. much more efficient game, although possibly still a very even game that takes a little while. We'll see what happens. I mean, Swiss tournaments, by their nature, tend to get a bit more even as the tournament goes on. The map is Gecko Isle, which I actually don't know that much about. It's quite new. Um, yes, it has a lot of free claim. Like, really a lot. I expect to see early cons and... Hmm. I really don't know what to expect. Expect, except you know, cloakies. Maybe, yeah. maybe spiders, but I'm not sure. No, yeah, this I think map, vehicles are actually fairly viable. I've seen. But yeah, I could oh, see really? spiders. Like, well, I mean, it's mostly flat, right? And we were actually seeing Google Frog go for rover assembly. Oh, nice. This I'm is going to be interesting. Yeah, this is map that came up from the two tournament last time. So that's why I'm somewhat familiar with it, and that I'm familiar with that it is. Not unfriendly to vehicles, though we have shields coming here from Wesley as well. Well, it's going to be interesting. Let's see how Scorchers dive into Outlaws and whatever. And die. And die and a horrible, die. painful death. As slow. you do. And slow. So slow. Yeah, slow, horrible, Outlaws painful are death. Really... <laughs> yeah. I really like Outlaws. They're, they're... An interesting unit, it's like exactly you know, you want it to be a riot, but it's not an in your face riot, like let's say river. It's a I will kill you guys, just just you wait. <laughs> I'll kill you eventually, just need to, yeah, I'll do it later. Exactly, but anyway, West going for convict early on, as Gook Fog isn't and Mason eventually, but standard. And a Dart Scorcher Mason. Very common rover build. Well, Wesley clearly going for the early reclaim because of course you do! Like I said, this map's got a lot of reclaim. It's got about 2,000 per side, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, can confirm. It's just next to the base, it's got about 2,000. See how Wesley is queuing a few reclaims and then immediately expansion is just setting the orders for like the next three minutes. That is a really good, like, that's the thing with this game. You just, you get to queue stuff, and that's exactly what's happening. We get all the things queued, and I like that Wes, ooh, nice use of Circle Guard, too. You don't see people use Circle Guard all that often. Surprisingly, Google Frog, of all people, since they made Circle Guard. But Wes is on that. They want to make sure that they've got those bandits right next to that convict, but under the convict shields. I like it. Yeah, it's cool. nice. I, I, I'll learn from it for my next games. Yeah, it's kind of tricky, though. You have to hold the guard command and draw a circle with the unit in the direct center of the circle. Like, you can click on the unit and then draw away from that, and that should work. But it is a bit tricky to do just really quickly, so it's something you see more often, like, in this situation, early game. Well, if you see it at all, really. Google Frog, in the meanwhile, is doing a bit of naked expand. Um... And Wesley Boss isn't raiding. Just notice. Yeah, they're actually getting raided. I mean, Scorch is coming in here, and it's not really managing to find much, because there's nothing really in between. It's all reclaim, and that's been taken. But still, that is that is justifying what Google Frog, sorry, what Wesley is doing, where they just have that circle guard. Although we're... Ooh, never mind. There's a bit of what could have been a raid from Wes, but it looks like, yeah, Wes is going entirely defensive. They want that metal. They want that reclaim. They're not worried about taking care of Google Frog's economy yet. They just want stuff to be 
built up right now before Google Frog has any chance to take it out. And I agree with that. Like, well, it's again a matter. I I know. Well, you you see the slashers. Google Frog is slightly more aggressive in this game, and is not uh, echoing as fast as Wesley. I fear. Um, we will see if it pays off. I'm not surprised though. Google Frog has faster units. I mean, Scorchers are amazingly fast, so you can't really compete with that as Wesley. I mean, you can try, I suppose. And we do have the bandits coming in as defense, but yeah, it looks like that's exactly what's happening. Wes is just playing a defensive game. They want to make sure that they have whatever they need to keep themselves alive and keep their economy going. And they are in an advantageous position economically, at least as far as metal goes, but they're about to excess thanks to the lack of energy, which they are taking care of, but the timing wasn't quite perfect. Now, Google Frog is sending his com forward. There's like more than the, like, you know, there's this imaginary line in yep. the middle so, which doesn't really exist but now google frogs com is offensive com it's not just uh, a build power and it's not just um constructor it's it he's using it offensively i think google frog is understanding what wesley boss is doing that wesley boss doesn't have many units Ooh. and look at it terraform, terraform. just to get the slasher the ramp. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, that is that is clever. And the starters isn't really going to help too much, unfortunately, because the slashes will outrange it. Or rather, the just the defensors no, will finger. outrange it. Oh, it was Stardust? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. It was oh. a Stardust, which means no dice as far as man, making anything work, but that's clever. Clearly, why Google Rock with the commander of an expansion dead with no losses. That being said, though, Wesley Boss is ahead by metal, even without that expansion. So, True. that is the thing to bear in mind, is that it's actually, it's worth noting that Wes is in a strong position regardless. They just need more energy. That's the thing. They lost the energy. That still hurts them. But they've got energy, they got power plants being built up north. So, ultimately, if they can get this turn it around, which they're actually managing to do a decent job of, then Google Fog is still in an off not in the best position, but eh, I don't know. Google Frog's got this. Unless reinforcements come in and manage to take out Google Frog's commander right now. Which actually they are able to do. Those defenses are not helping as they are moving, but that doesn't matter. Wes loses their commander in the process. So Google Frog might lose their commander as a revenge kill. But at this point, it's all that's available. And indeed, that does go down. So both commanders dying right next to each other. Leaving not much, but Wes is ahead. They have the energy to keep this production going more than Google Frog does, and they just have more metal than Google Frog. So a very strong position to lose your commander in, that's for sure. Google Frog is slightly um, on top with regards to unit combination. Well, I think Wes has a bit more units, but these scorchers just preventing anything to go around. And here are the outlaws. I pr promised you Scorchers diving into outlaws, and we will see it. Well, we'll see outlaws. I think Google Frog is going to be prudent enough not to dive their Scorchers into them, but they might have no choice depending on how this game goes. Well, they, if even you know, they, they do have one thug at the moment, but uh, if they don't have a thug, Scorchers can really kill outlaws. It does happen, it did happen, it works. And the Scorchers are coming over to the next expansion and finding a little bit more resistance than they'd like. The bandits are around, and the two Lotuses up should stop anything. Google Frog certainly thinks they should, and is avoiding them. And also going for the northwest naked expansion, potential naked expansion, not finding anything, but the northeast is a basically naked expansion. If they go for that, and that's likely their next target, Wesley is going to have a harder time. However, at this point, they have the economy, they have the production, they're actually in a really good position right now just to set up a strong push against Google Frog, force Google Frog back home, and deal enough damage that I think it could turn into their favor pretty effectively. Finally, Google Frog is expanding. It took some time, but it seems to happen. And now Wesley Boss is taking the expansion oh, in the north. Good timing. <laughs> right good after it boss. stops being threatened. Good job there. I mean, really, good job. That was actually, that was perfect no, timing. No, Caretaker is going to die. No, Google Frog's not aware of it. No, Google Frog missed it. Or barely it. aware. Google Frog missed it. 
No, he is coming in. Oh, yeah, coming no, on the back side, the but there's already Lotuses. Everything's set up. One max for a Scorcher. Not a terrible trade-off, but Wes is so far ahead in economy that you need to do more than just one mechs to make that work. However, the fence are over here. Getting rid of the Lotuses, that is going to be where this could turn around. And Google Frog having that, having that the against south, this expansion. Wes, the boss with this Thug Ball, Thug Rogue Ball, I don't know what it is even. Um, it is advancing, and Google Frog is making Dominatrix. This Wait. is surprising. Oh, that could be dangerous against the outlaws. Like right in the middle of the, the army. I think that's what Google Frog's thinking. At the same time, they have the northern expansion being torn to it pieces. Is in, it so is on hold fire. Ooh. The dominatrix. Is something he's planning. There it is. There's the and outlaw grab. Yes, the outlaw. Or at least maybe. And at the same time, these Scorchers managing to deal a fair amount of damage, take Wesley's economy down to parity with Google Frog, but... It's still going to go down to the bandits. The bandits are coming in here. And with one bandit lost, maybe two. Now, nah, just the one. Scorchers go down. Opening things back up. Google Frog could... Eh, Google Frog is not going to be in a nice position since Wesley can take that back and Google Frog's losing their south expansion unless something massively changes. I'm... Yeah, this, this approach, like the Ravagers... I can kind of see why, but the Rogues just feel like they're getting the wave to me. Ravager is just tanky enough to mess up, and that is kind of the point. Once you can mess up, you can retreat, you can try again. Less that harm done than... But okay, same... all these bandits... Yeah, all these bandits, but are... against an outlaw, the outlaw is up! That's... <laughs> Unless the domination goes down, but the Ravagers, like you said, are tanky. They are going to stop that from happening, at least quickly enough, and... What are these... Oh, they're on fight move, that's why. That's why they're moving the way they were. But yeah, if the Dominatrix goes down, then there's no easy way for Google Frog to take this, but that Dominatrix is still helping a lot. However, expansions, again, Wesley has rebuilt and is ready to go. He's ready to and set Google everything Frog back up. Isn't building, Google Frog isn't building as much as he should have. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see this sending well for Google Frog. Neither do I. This looks like it's going to be the map. Unless this entire army is destroyed from Ivan, from Wesley. Ivan's Spectre just distracted me. Unless Wes loses his entire army here without too many losses on Google Frog's part, this is it. And that was a really good Faraday shot. These bandits are getting hit hard. And the Dominatrixes are helping. But it's still hard to say. This, however, is the chance. This is the opportunity. If anything is going to cause problems, anything is going to make make life difficult for Wesley is this but losing the re losing the rover assembly that is gonna that's gonna be it the domination is down as well and Google Frog knows it towels are thrown Man. listen this was an absolute marvel of a game yeah it's certainly How? a lot of nice expansion a lot of good use of the map especially the reclaim coming out from Wesley it was the reclaim and it was the fact that um, the expansions, like Wesley didn't go for the um, harder expansions, he went for the safe one, if you notice. And yeah, the one right sure here. And sure it is safe ag exactly against Google Frog. And he put three lotuses in his base. So this is this is game deciding. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was the thing I really liked. I liked how Wes was approaching it at the beginning with the circle guards and everything and then turning that into a bunch of lotuses and a bunch of a bunch of money which google frog i'm just surprised they had some idle commanders around here too that were just not i don't know why they were idle i wonder if google frog's getting tired or no, what it is, is possible it is everybody's possible. tired after a few games yeah uh, also google frog is saying in chat that he didn't expect to lose his com which makes sense nobody expects to lose yeah. their yeah it was a very, very nice assault there, and maybe if Google Frog didn't lose his calm, they could, you know, um, <laughs> turn this over. But uh, Wesley did find the forces to hit it. So, here we are. Yep, and that's exactly it. The 
mean, you mentioned before how losing a commander is a big deal. And in this case, it wasn't so much morale as it was simply expectations. Right. It was... Uh, Google Frog took a risk by uh, crossing the imaginary middle. Yeah. He, he took, uh, you know, the comp. Yep. Um, and put it in danger. Sometimes it works. And even though it was a trade, a comp for a comp, the reclaim was on the wrong side and his units got you know, killed and, and, you know, risks don't always uh, materialize into gains. And that was a case where it certainly didn't. At this point, though, it looks like we are looking at probably a near in CPO. Is that still ongoing? Yes, I am now rejoining. Hmm. I'm actually kind of curious how these players take it, because we saw before lots of reclaim use and save expansions, but of course that's not how everyone's going to play this. Oops. What do we got available here? Alright, so right off the bat, Anir going for L Rover while Hovercraft's coming out from CPO, and CPO very rapidly getting quite a lot of Quite a lot of attempts at raiding, some mechs here and there, but not a whole lot compared to the reclaim they're donating. Well, on the other hand, Anir not finding much thanks to the scalpels that have already been put up. So, both players quite strong defensively, but Anir getting a th better start economically than CPO. CPO doing all the reclaim they can, actually doing a massive amount of reclaim, and that is keeping them in the games thus far. But now with Anir having their strategic economy set up, they are good. They're not going to worry about anything, as CPO should be able to just get through this. Although, getting rid of a little bit of an expansion from Anir, the forward expansion was a bit too risky, but overall, Anir should basically hold this off, no problem. And actually, at this point, it looks like CPO is... Both players managing to hold each other off. That's the thing, though. CPO does have the economic disadvantage. Now, if Anir does not... I mean, if Anir holds this for any amount of time, it's going to be fine, but CPO is expanding over to the south, managing to get some stuff set up. It's still too little too late as far as I'm concerned, but with the amount of amount of times that CPO has held off in years assaults and the amount of reclaim available, for more of the fact that these that the badges are here, we probably see CPO further ahead thanks to the reclaim. Anyway, at this point, CPO's still here. Anir, however, managing to expand over the eastern side of the map, and Anir essentially has this. As soon as any good assault comes in with the Thunderbirds, especially. That should finish it off, and CPO throwing in the towel, managing to get a decent amount of defense early on, but never managing to get the expansion and metals they needed to stay in the game. And that should basically be round five at this point. Because I don't think there's all that much left. Like, so you got an N2O, should be over anytime now. Or not? Well, whatever. Anyway, for now, it's going to take a short break until round six. Should be started fairly soon. Wow, that was a really fast round, now that I think about it. Yeah, it was. Definitely. It's, it's, maybe the fact that the map is um, so flat and so fast to get from point to point is what makes it fast. I don't know. It Just certainly haven't seems like played it, it enough. Certainly the reclaim helps a lot too, getting yourself built up as early as you do. But next is going to be Downpour, which is also another map that's pretty small. I'll be that, have that in a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 